Hi, I'm Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy of the 8th District of Illinois. Thank you to Horasis for inviting me to provide remarks. And thank you to Dr. Frank Jurgen Richter for inviting me as well. As we continue to face the pandemic, organizations like yours are at the forefront of promoting recovery by fostering entrepreneurship and leadership. Congress must work alongside business leaders such as those at Horasis to fix our supply chain, invest in workforce development, and strengthen infrastructure. I'm very proud to have supported the Bipartisan America Competes Act, which passed in the House of Representatives in February. The America Competes Act will strengthen our supply chain by sourcing critical goods domestically and it invests in American industries to increase our global competitiveness, especially in re relationship to the People's, Re People's Republic of China. The America Competes Act creates opportunities for workers to access in-demand skills. Addressing the skills gap is something I have worked extensively on in Congress through career and technical education legislation and workforce development programming. We are setting the stage for a prosperous industry and economic future in the post-COVID world. The economic growth and American leadership that we hope to see in the post-COVID world would not be possible without exceptional leaders, entrepreneurs, and global change makers like all of you. Thank you so much. Hi everyone. Um, I am uh, um, really pleased to have an opportunity to share this panel with you today. Uh, my apologies for not being uh, here uh, live. Um, calendars didn't permit it this time around. Um, I wanted to um, tell you a little bit about the work that I do um, here in the Department of the Air Force, uh, and then talk a little bit about how technology um, and the way that we comprehend it, comprehend it in the department plays into the uh, the partnership that is the focus of um, this um, uh, this event today. So the, the chief scientist uh, of the Air Force, which is the position that I uh, that I hold, um, is responsible for providing good, sound scientific advice uh, to the secretary of the Air Force, as well as uh, the chief of the Air Force and the chief of space operations. Um, for our newest service here in the United States, the United States Space Force. Uh, so this is the, the role uh, that, I, uh, that I have um, at, uh, at this moment. Um, reflecting on, uh, you know, on your work and the kinds of things that you'll be talking about today, um, I wanted to emphasize a little bit how partnerships like these uh, that are, are comprehended with um, our NATO allies are really critical in um, not only building national security, which of course is our business here in the Department of the Air Force, but also economic security. Um, there are so many areas that uh, would that do and would benefit from even more co cooperation and collaboration. And I, I, I tend to think of them in two buckets. And one perhaps is, you know, quite obvious, kind of emerging technologies, uh, things like AI, uh, autonomy, quantum, uh, synthetic biology, a ton of areas that are emerging where working together we can accelerate them so that, you know, collectively we arrive at solutions um, much sooner than otherwise, and we're also able to share them. Um, the area, the, the second area, which perhaps is not as, uh, as, uh, as obvious is our ability to work together to build diverse and uh, resilient supply chains. You know, with the pandemic, you know, we saw a number of challenges that we had in that regard. Um, and one that I know is prominent in many, many people's minds is um, the availability of microelectronics, uh, you know, uh, semiconductors, microprocessors for uh, for the auto industry, amongst other uh, other areas. Uh, here in the United States, we've done a lot of work in the, the last two or three years to understand um, the extent um, of our reliance uh, to overseas supply chains. And we've been, uh, been trying to work, um, you know, internally here with the US government, but also with our allies to begin to, to build out a more resilient, um, less dependent uh, supply chain. 
for microelectronics. We see a we see a particularly um, a ripe opportunity for collaboration to build those um, um, those kind of you know new factories, new fabs, new design centers, uh, not only here in the United States but also in um, partner countries in, in Europe. And it's interesting, of course, that as we've been developing our own microelectronic strategy, uh, government-wide, the European Union has been doing the same thing uh, in uh, in your in your environment. Um, the, the last thing I wanted to, uh, to mention, uh, and I wanted to make a special mention of that, is, is space. Um, you know, when, when the Space Force was created two years ago, one of the key um, kind of tenets of um, the, uh, uh, the service is that there will never come, in, come a day where we will not have access to space. Um, you know, just think about GPS and GPS disappearing, what the impact of that would be uh, you know, on daily life on national security, but also on economic uh, uh, security. It, the, the impact on, um, you know, in, in, in terms of economics is counted in the billions for, for a day. Uh, so the, the, the space force um, and of course the technologies that go with it really um, call for responsible use of space uh, all the way from you know, maintaining access to making sure that, you know, debris doesn't, uh, you know, that, that, that doesn't create operational um, you know, difficulties for key assets that everybody relies on, but also, you know, uh, looking at the out here and looking at the way that uh, space activity, commercial space activity is, uh, is expanding. Um, our goal uh, is to work um, with our allies to create and establish democratic norms that will really ensure access for everyone uh, in, this, uh, in this new domain of economic activity. So many, many things to unpack there. Um, I, I know that my, uh, my colleagues on the panel here will do, um, will do all these topics and more justice. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Frank Jürgen Richter for giving me the opportunity to be part of this today. And also, um, my co-panelists, Luca and Carmelo, as well as Rosalind for uh, moderating this panel. Thank you so much. Um, I wish you, um, you know, a, a great day and lots of wonderful information exchange. Thank you.